Thanks for having me. Uh, so your title at Uber is head of global operations. Before that, it was head of launch. Before that, you wore almost every other hat because you were employee number four in 2010. Nice. We're going to talk about that crazy ride that you've been on. But before we get to that, I want to talk about the years leading up to that point. I think given your remarkable rise at Uber, people might be surprised to hear that in the years leading up to that, you faced more of a personal struggle. Can you tell me about that? Sure. Um, so yes, it's been a wild ride. And this isn't something I've, I've really talked about uh, incredibly publicly, but this is an incredible, uh, this is the perfect venue to do it, is, um, you know, when I was, when I was a teenager, I, I had uh, a bit of a nuanced relationship with drugs, and I, uh, I ended up getting in a bit over my head, and uh, ultimately, um, you know, I had a drug addiction, and so um, I, you know, I, I got sober, I'm, I'm 10 years sober. Um, this is when you were in college. But, yeah, oh, thank you. Um, but, you know, at that time, it was, I was, you know, I was in a really dark place, and, and, you know, I had, it was a moment of, you know, stepping back with my family and being like, I don't want to be, I don't like who I am. I just kind of physically, spiritually, spiritually emotionally was, was just really sick. And so, um, you know, I took several years off school, um, and, and really, you know, I got all the right help I needed, and I was, I was super willing to, to take all the steps, right? Any recommendations to get help, I was absolutely willing to go back to basics. And, um, and you know, so I spent the next several years, like I graduated college at 25, which was, I was so insecure about feeling behind, but it was, it was such the right thing for me to do because so you I, went back, you took the time off and then you I went back and I took the time back and so, you know, I was a sober 20, 25 year old senior. And, um, which was a very different experience, but it's, um, it was just so important for me to get that part of my life right so that the rest of my life could be, um, could, could be right. And getting that part of your life right, you have told me, really gave you a lot of tools that ended up serving you quite well in this crazy journey you've been on at Uber. Yeah, yeah, I mean, absolutely. I think, um, I think I, like, I think I was given this toolkit that I, that in everything I do at Uber, I mean, I think the most important thing is just perspective, right? Like, I think it's easy in, um, in Silicon Valley at a startup. Like, I've certainly, I live and breathe Uber. I have, I've been here since the start. But at the end of the day, like, I'm really proud. I'm so proud of the work my, my team has done at Uber and of the work I've done at Uber. But it's not the proudest thing I've done, right? I'm, I'm more proud of being sober. And I'm, I'm, I just have perspective of like, this is an incredible, I'm so fortunate to be a part of this and it's been so cool. It's, you know, but being sober and, and you know, being able to share that with my family and, and whatnot is, means a whole lot more. And then there's just tools of like, getting sober, like, there's just tools that taught me how to be, I'm so direct at work and, and so honest. And so like, tools like that are just, when I look at a project, like, it taught me to just dissect things into baby steps, right? It's just like, do the next right thing. And so even when I look at a big project now, it's like, I don't get overwhelmed. Well, I, I certainly do get overwhelmed, but I don't, I don't, I step back and I say, well, what's the next right thing to do here? And so, um, and then I always just try and have a sense of humility in both of those areas of my life too, of just, um, and not feeling self-important or anything like that. So, so those have carried over quite nicely. Sounds like, I mean, one might say, going into a high stress environment like a Uber in 2010, would be difficult for someone who's just come off another, you know, big life experience. But it sounds like it actually made you more prepared in a way. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And how did you get to Uber? Just tell us a little bit. You were 25. Uh, you had just graduated, and you got an internship at Uber. I did. I mean, I was. I would love to say, um, you know, that I made that happen. I was quite lucky, right? I. Um, I was right out of school, and I was I was just looking at jobs. It was, it was 2010, so the economy was it was quite hard to get an internship, um, and my resume was qu was quite blank at the time. Um, and so, uh, for me, it was you know I was certainly like I knew I wanted to work. In, I thought tech was really interesting. I also knew a really formal job wasn't for me. Like this is the most stressed up you will ever see me, <laughs> and um, I will change out of this before I go to work because they'll make fun of me. And um, and I, I just knew like tech and, and a startup was just the right fit for me. And so I was, I was certainly following like on Twitter and, and just a lot of what was going on. And I had Uber, Uber Cab had just launched. And so I was, I had reached out to Ryan Graves and, um, you know, and he said, hey, like put together a presentation. And I remember, um, 
I remember just, I had applied to so many places and not heard back. And I remember for this one, I just, you know, I just went all out on it. Like I didn't hold back, like humor, I was like, you know, screw it. Like let's just put it all in there because I just didn't have anything to lose. I was kind of desperate at that point. Um, and he was just like, I love this. And so, um, so he, we gave it a shot and it, it worked out. And at first you said you thought you felt I'm so far behind. I'm a 25 year old intern, but very quickly you realized that didn't matter because you started doing everything, they, anything that was needed to be done. Yeah, kind of yeah, absolutely. So some of your early roles, I mean, you did everything. You did marketing, you did community management, you were interim general manager of New York City, head of launch, all this stuff. Um, and you've also talked about, some, some of this is innate to your personality. You have certain personality traits that I thought were really interesting that lend themselves to that. Like you call yourself a, a little bit scrappy, a lot yeah. of survivalist instincts, yeah. um, kind of very hands-on. Totally, yeah, I mean, I think, I think, and I like to, like, I certainly think I have a certain grit of just like, let's just get things done. And, um, and I, think, I think my team has that same thing of just like, you know, it's not always pretty how we get it done, but we really try and kind of get there eventually. And so what are you focused on now? What is your big, what's big on your plate right now? So right now, um, you know, I have a pretty big team. It's, it's what we call the pro team. And it's, you know, I ran the expansion team and we're in 350 um, cities and, and that's great. But now we, we need to make sure that we don't have 350 different companies. And so it's all about streamlining to make sure we're onboarding the same way and we're using similar data. And, and so, um, and that's pro for process, process, resource, resource and optimization. And so, um, and also, um, so that's a big, you know, it's a big team. And so managing that, and then also the, you know, we made a commitment to have a million women on the platform by 2020. So that's been a big, um, that's a big initiative I'm really excited about. So, um, so yeah, we, there's just a lot of work to do. So I'm excited. So some have criticized the Uber culture for being um, bro-like or, um, you know, not favorable to women in any way. But what's your experience has been a little different, I think. It just hasn't been my experience. I, I mean, um, I was the, I was literally the first woman. And um, so, and I've just always felt really supported. Um, and my, like, my ideas have always felt supported. I've always felt like I've had a seat at the table. Um, I've certainly had a, a unique um, just trajectory there. But, um, you know, Rachel Holtz here and, and uh, just the peers, I, the female peers I have at Uber are, are just, uh, I go to them every day and they're so, uh, they're just, they inspire me and they're really incredible. So that just hasn't, that just hasn't rung true for me is, is all I can say. And you've been open about your personal story at Uber too. I mean, this is the first time you're speaking publicly about this, but this is part of who you are oh, at totally. Uber. It's very Yeah, yeah. people open. know I'm sober at Uber. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, you said when you started, there were four of you and within a month you knew everything about each other because yeah. Yep. There are four of you. Yep. <laughs> so what's next for you? What's, what's, where is uh, your role going to take you next? What's the next challenge at Uber? I don't really know. And again, back to baby steps, I don't really care, right? Like, I don't need to know, I guess. Um, I think for me, it's like, what do I need to get done today? And, and I just want to make sure I'm doing the best job I can today. And the scope of my role has changed so many times. Like, our company sheds into a new company every every quarter, right? Like we just become a different company with new products and, and just the size, it, it just varies tremendously. And you know, say that that's certainly changed. My role has changed considerably and just, you know, expansion to process to all of these different things. So I don't know, but um, I'm certainly, I'm certainly excited to find out. Is it fun? Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I mean, it's, it's just, you know, it's, it's been, it's been a weird decade for sure, right? For, um, from getting sober to Uber, it's just been, it's been a really, <laughs> It's been a weird 10 years for me, but it's just, it's just, there's been nothing traditional about my, um, about my, the last 10 years of my life. And I wouldn't, I just wouldn't have it any other way. It's just been so, it's been so interesting and it's, um, and you know, I, I, I love that it hasn't just been this normal. It's been really weird and it's been, um, and it's been so surreal and I'm really grateful for everything, everything I have. All from walking in the door that one day, yeah. I mean, walking into Uber. Yeah. Uh, you, so you just turned 30 this year. I did. So it really has been 10 years exactly. So this is your 10-year anniversary of being sober. And you're February, yeah. In February. And your five-year anniversary at Uber. Yeah. So, but you have said if you could change anything about your path that you, you wouldn't. I wouldn't. Not one thing. No. No. That's really great. No. We don't have time for any questions. I'm so sorry. I wish we could talk more about this. I want to thank you for being here with us today. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. And Your thank story you is one of overcoming adversity and strength. And congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, guys.